Good morning. And as you can probably see, I'm experimenting again this morning. And this time I'm experimenting with my webcam. And uh, basically, it's a, a Logitech webcam that I've had sat around the house for a couple of years and it hasn't really had a run out. So I thought I'm going to dust it off and I'm going to give it a go and see how we get on. So here we are. And what I want to talk about this morning is an article coming out of an outlet called Protocol. And uh, a lot of news outlets are reporting this. And basically what they're talking about is Phil Spencer. And in this article, Phil Spencer is quoted as having said that he doesn't really see Sony and Nintendo as being Microsoft and Xbox's competition. And uh, he, he sees companies like Amazon and Google as the real competition. And this is not really anything new. We've heard this from Phil Spencer before, and we've heard this from Microsoft before. And I've actually said it myself before. Microsoft don't really look to Sony and Nintendo as their competition. Obviously, they are competing with them within the gaming market, but the gaming market is about to change. And the gaming market is being eyed greedily by the likes of Amazon and Google. And if you look at the article, let me just go down. It's entitled, Why Big Tech is Betting Big on Gaming in 2020. And then they go on to detail why it's getting to be a big thing for big tech. And to be honest, it's a no-brainer. It's pretty obvious that they would want to get into this market. And this is why. <laughs> it says, at more than $150 billion in annual revenue, the global game industry is now more than twice the combined size of the worldwide film box office at $42.5 billion in 2019, and the planet's recorded music business at $19.1 billion as of 2018, and that includes streaming. And then it goes on to say, roughly 2.5 billion people play games, even if many don't think of themselves as gamers. And that's the important point here. Most of the gamers on the planet, and I know some of you hardcore gamers won't like the idea of these people being called gamers, but the reality is that most of the gamers on the planet aren't hardcore gamers. They are gamers playing things like, as they mention here, Candy Crush. And that amounts for the largest portion of the market. You can't get away from that. The facts speak for themselves. You've got the mobile gaming market, then you've got the PC gaming market, and then you've got consoles following on after that. So moving on to what Phil Spencer says, it's not a surprise really that one, companies like Amazon and Google are looking to move into gaming, and two, that Microsoft see them as their real competition. And this is what Phil Spencer said. Let's just go all the way down to Microsoft. And, and this is a really interesting article, incidentally, and it goes into a lot more detail than just talking about this. This isn't just about Phil Spencer. And I'll put a link into the article and you should read it. It's, it's, as I say, it's really interesting. And this is what Phil Spencer said. He said, when you talk about Nintendo and Sony, we have, to, we have a ton of respect for them, but we see Amazon and Google as the main competitors going forward. That's not to disrespect Nintendo and Sony, but the traditional gaming companies are somewhat out of position. I guess they could try to recreate Azure, but we've invested tens of billions of dollars in cloud over the years. And that's interesting. What he's basically saying is that if you look into the future, cloud gaming is where it's at. And I know a lot of people aren't going to like that idea, but that's the reality. If you look forward 10 years, 20 years, 30 years down the line, we're going to be looking more and more to cloud gaming. And services like Google Stadia, Microsoft's xCloud, NVIDIA's GeForce Now, and the upcoming, because a lot of people are saying it is coming, Amazon streaming service, they are going to be the important players in the marketplace at that time. Now, not all of them, obviously, and, and uh, we all know what a spectacularly brilliant start <laughs> Google Stadia's had, and that could go the wayside before the starting gun's even really been fired. But nevertheless, we are going to see 
Microsoft, NVIDIA, Amazon, maybe some other companies coming into the fray. Even Google Stadia could turn it around. You never know. And that is where the big money is. That is where the massive global market is. As Phil Spencer goes on to say, I don't want to be in a fight over format wars with those guys while Amazon and Google are focusing on how to get gaming to 7 billion people around the world. Ultimately, that's the goal. And that's what these companies are looking to do. And I can't imagine that Sony and Nintendo aren't looking at this as well. We already know that Sony have done some sort of tentative deal with Microsoft to use their servers in some way. We don't really know how that's going to work. But the reality is that moving forward, the idea of owning a console and buying a disc are already starting to look like the past. Most gamers now buy their games digitally. And a lot of gamers are moving into having a, a subscription service. You know, the, the much touted Netflix of gaming. And who manages to crack that market and become the big player? They're going to make an awful lot of money. They're going to make a massive part of this big pie that they were talking about here. The $150 billion in annual revenue. And that $150 billion in annual revenue is only going to get bigger. So yeah, of course, <laughs> Phil Spencer is going to be looking at Amazon and Google. And, you know, the big companies, the big players, the, the companies that have the server infrastructure are, of course, best placed to provide those services. And AWS, Amazon Web Services, and Microsoft's Azure servers are the biggest out there. And Google, I think, is third. So, no, Nintendo and Sony can't compete in that market. So anyway, look, you know, I don't know what you guys think. Do you think that it, <laughs> Phil Spencer was kind of throwing shade at Nintendo and Sony? I personally don't. I just think he was saying it as he sees it. And I think the market out there sees it like that now. I don't think Sony and Nintendo are necessarily going to be the big players moving forward. They will still continue to be really significant in the next few years, maybe the next 10 years. But if they don't move into cloud gaming, they will get left behind. The market is changing. Things are about to change massively if Amazon come into the marketplace. And let's hope they don't do what Google did and, and go about it in a half-assed manner. I would imagine Amazon may have looked at Google and, and try and go about it in a different way. But as I say, at the risk of repeating myself again, these guys, the big guys, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, they are the ones best placed. And uh, yeah, whether we like it or not as gamers, and, and I've said this before as well, the hardcore gamers, they're not that important. We might think we are, but we're not. Not in terms of the big business and where the money is. And hopefully we'll still get <laughs> tossed some scraps now and then. And, you know, I, I can imagine, certainly Microsoft, I think Microsoft are particularly well placed here. I think they've already established themselves as a games company. And I, I know there have been some issues with them with their first party in, in this generation. But they are in a good place. They understand the gaming market. They understand the server market. And that's something that Amazon and Google don't really have. They don't understand the gaming market, whereas Microsoft does. Now, Sony and Nintendo understand the gaming market, but they don't understand the server market. So Microsoft could be best placed of all those companies moving forward. And NVIDIA, well, they're kind of an outlier. I, I don't know where they're going to fit in with all this, with their streaming and GeForce Now. Maybe they could go you know, by the wayside, or they might grow as well. They're certainly not a poor company. But anyway, it's an interesting one. I don't think Phil Spencer was, you know, trying to belittle the competition, if you like, belittle Sony and Nintendo. As I say, I think he was just saying it as he sees it. And uh, I don't think he was wrong. I really don't. The market is much bigger 
than those hardcore gamers who like to play Gears of War or, <laughs> or God of War and, and all those traditional fantastic games that we love to play. We just hope, well, we have to hope, I suppose, that they don't leave us behind and just focus on things like Candy Crush. I don't think somebody like Phil Spencer will do that because I think on some level, at least, he is still a gamer and he is still a developer and he wants to develop those those great games. And I think Microsoft have been looking to do that, whether they managed to bring stuff like the, you know, the, the games that are being worked on by the coalition and others to any sort of fruition or whether they end up getting cancelled or whatever, we don't know. But they do have <laughs> they do have a history of being in the gaming market and knowing the gaming market. And they also have this other side of Microsoft with their servers. And uh, yeah, anyway, that that's what I think. I think that Phil Spencer was just telling the truth. And I think we're going to see an awful lot of change moving forward in the gaming industry in the next five to 10 years. But as I say, you guys might completely disagree. And if you do, let me know in the comments and we can have a chat about it. And if you like this one, give it a thumbs up and all the usual nonsense and uh, and <laughs> share it with your friends and all that crap. And y you know, I'm, I'm not going to go on about that too much. And uh, yeah, anyway, I'm going to go and grab myself a cup of tea and I will speak to you guys in the next one. Hope you like this one. Bye.